One more week until the 2024 NFL Draft, ladies and gentlemen. We are almost there. Let's begin at pick number five. And you had the odds and you executed a trade. Tell us what happened at pick number five. Well, I had the Minnesota Vikings moving up to get J.J. McCarthy. And yes, several blockbuster trades were projected for this piece. So, lights, camera, action, let's go. Number one, Chicago Bears from Carolina Panthers, Caleb Williams. The Carolina Panthers gifted them the first overall pick. Now Chicago can use it on franchise-changing QB and Williams, who'll produce immediately with DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, DeAndre Swift, and Khalil Herbert headlining a deep set of weapons. A promising new era of Bears football begins now. Number two, Washington Commanders, Jaden Daniels. It's between Daniels, Drake May, and JJ McCarthy here. But the Commanders ought to go with the guy who has the highest ceiling and a dual-threat QB like like Daniels is tailor-made for the offense Cliff Kingsbury will run in DC. Daniels, Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, and Austin Eckler? Oh yeah, now we're talking. Number three, New England Patriots, Drake May. Don't be surprised if the Patriots end up dealing this pick, but the best bet is to stay put and take a chance on Drake May, who has all the physical tools to be the difference-making quarterback that Mac Jones never really became in Foxborough. May will need to hone his craft, but there is no guarantee that New England will be in a spot to take an elite QB prospect here next year. So take May now, build around him, and address your remaining needs in the later rounds. Number four, Arizona Cardinals, Marvin Harrison Jr. GM Monty Austin Fort will have weighed several offers for the number four selection, but ultimately, he just can't get himself to pass on a generational wide receiver talent in Marvin Harrison Jr. Kyler Murray looked like his old self thrown to rising star tight in Trey McBride last year. Just to add Harrison Jr., the son of Pro Football Hall of Famer Marvin Harrison to the arsenal, and you're gonna get the best version of Kyler Murray yet. Number five, Minnesota Vikings, projected trade with Los Angeles Chargers, JJ McCarthy. Projected trade alert! The Vikings acquire the number 5 pick from the Chargers in exchange for the number 11 and number 23 picks. With that pick, the Vikings get their new franchise signal collar to build around. McCarthy might take some time to find his game at the pros, but that's why the Vikes signed Sam Darnold as a bridge option. With Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, and TJ Hawkinson at his side, McCarthy would be in a great spot to succeed in many for years to come. Number 6, New York Giants, Romo Dunze. With the top QBs off the board, the G-Men avoid the temptation to find Daniel Jones' as replacement in round 1. So instead, they settle on the best remaining non-QB in Washington wideout, Romo Dunze. And that'll do nicely as a consolation prize. The Giants have lacked a star WR1 since trading Odell Beckham Jr. five years ago. Odunze has similar game-breaking abilities and would give the Giants a valuable long-term cornerstone piece on offense. Number 7, Tennessee Titans, Joe Alt. You're seeing this selection in a million mock drafts, and rightfully so. Alt just makes way too much sense for a Titans team that has always emphasized winning in the trenches. In Alt, Peter's Skaronski offensive tackle tandem could be football's best for the next decade. No excuses for Will Levis to not succeed behind center. Number 8, Los Angeles Chargers. Projected trade with Atlanta Falcons, Malik Neighbors. Our second projected trade alert. The Bolts acquire the number 8 pick from Atlanta in exchange for the number 11 and number 69 selections. Having secured an extra first from the Vikings in this exercise, the Chargers get aggressive and jump the Bears to make sure that they get the last of the remaining big three wide receivers for Justin Herbert. Wide receiver is a priority for the Bolts after moving on from both Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. Neighbors' ability to stretch the field and open up the middle of the field will go hand in hand with Herbert's gunslinging release. Number 9, Chicago Bears, Brock Bowers. We well, wanted to go defense here, but how could GM Ryan Poles pass on a generational tight end prospect if he's still available at number 9? Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, George Kittle, TJ Hawkinson, and Sam Laporta have all recently shown the value of a difference-making tight end in the modern NFL. None of them had as much hype as Bowers entering the NFL. So let's give Williams a three-headed receiving monster and Bowers, Allen, and more. Take that, 31 other opposing defenses. Number 10, New York Jets, Olu Feshanu. The Jets will want to take someone who can step in and produce right away for Aaron Rodgers. Hard to think that Rodgers would be upset with the selection of Feshanu. The Penn State product didn't allow a single sack and 681 pass blocking snaps over his final two years of college ball per pro football focus. Adding Feshanu is the cherry on top of a beautiful O-line makeover by the front office. 
Number 11, Atlanta Falcons, Dallas Turner. It works out beautifully for Atlanta. They trade down, secure an extra third round pick, and still get the best edge rusher in this class. Signing Kirk Cousins means the Falcons are ready for takeoff on offense. With their first round pick, Atlanta has to address the leaky front seven, and Turner, who broke out with 10 sacks last season, would form a terrifying tandem with Grady Jarrett. Number 12, Denver Broncos, Terry and Arnold. If the Broncos aren't enamored with Michael Penix Jr. or Bo Nix, well, don't be surprised if they end up trading down here. But for now, we will assume that GM George Payton goes with the best player available mentality. Terry and Arnold is an all-world shutdown corner who would immediately form the league's best defensive back duo with all-pro Patrick Sertan II. Sertan himself has been floated in trade rumors, so Denver could simply draft Arnold with the idea that he replaces the 2021 first-round pick. Number 13, Las Vegas Raiders, Michael Penix Jr. Is this a reach? Eh, maybe. But in the sporting world, you gotta go big or go home. The Raiders have the pieces on offense and defense to be competitive. What they need is a franchise quarterback. Penix can sit behind Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew for a year or two if he's not ready. It just feels like the ideal landing spot for the Washington Huskies product. Number 14, New Orleans Saints, Talisa Fuaga. The Saints may lose Ryan Ramschek to retirement, and 2022 first rounder Trevor Penning has not come along as hoped. Derek Carr took too many vicious hits behind the Saints' leaky O line last year. Fuaga is a plug and play guy who didn't allow a single sack over his final three years of college football. So, in other words, someone Derek Carr will come to love very quickly. Number 15, Indianapolis Colts, Quinion Mitchell. The Colts have slowly but surely put together one of the best front sevens in all of football. But you know, they could use some help in the secondary. Like Terry and Arnold, Mitchell has all the tools to be an all-pro shutdown corner in the NFL. Indy needs a guy like Mitchell to defend against the onslaught of prolific pass catchers in the AFC. Number 16, Seattle Seahawks, J.C. Latham. The Seahawks O-line has been a problem dating back to the beginning of the Russell Wilson era. Well, here's their chance to fix it with Alabama offensive tackle J.C. Latham, an absolute menace in the trenches. Though his run blocking needs some work, Latham would immediately bolster the pass protection for Geno Smith. And that is what matters most in today's pass-happy league. Number 17, Jacksonville Jaguars, Cooper DeGene. Wouldn't be shocked if GM Trent Belke keeps it simple by taking the best remaining cornerback, which is the Jaguars' most pressing need at this point. At 6 foot 1 and 207 pounds, DeGene has the ideal combination of size, range, and speed to challenge the opposition's number one receiver. Number 18, Cincinnati Bengals, Laiatu Latu. With T. Higgins indicating that he's fine playing the 2024 season under the franchise tag, the Bengals don't need to worry about receiver here. So instead, let's add another pass-rushing force to Lou Anarumo's defense. Trey Hendrickson sorely needs a running mate, so why not the guy with 23.5 sacks over his last two seasons at UCLA? Seems like a good choice to me. Number 19, Dallas Cowboys. Projected trade with Los Angeles Rams. Byron Murphy II. Another projected trade. The Dallas Cowboys acquire the number 19 pick from the Rams in exchange for picks number 24 and number 216, plus a 2025 third round pick. With that pick, Dallas solidified its defensive line by selecting Texas defensive tackle Byron Murphy II. So, with that, Murphy, Micah Parsons, and Demarcus Lawrence formed the big three pass rush trio. Number 20, Pittsburgh Steelers, Brian Thomas Jr. Barring a move from 20 here, Pittsburgh, I mean, they have to take the best available wide out, right? I mean, who's gonna replace Deontay Johnson and compliment rising star George Pickens? LSU's Brian Thomas Jr. is a grade A deep threat and red zone weapon who would make life so much easier for Russell Wilson and or Justin Fields. Number 21, Miami Dolphins, Jared Verse. With Jerome Baker, Emmanuel Ogba, and Christian Wilkins all departing, Miami's are already vulnerable defense sorely needs another pass rusher. Jalen Phillips is coming into his own as an all-pro caliber talent, but giving him a potent sidekick like Jared Verse could help take this Miami defense to a whole nother level. Number 22, Philadelphia Eagles, Nate Wiggins. Philly had the 31st ranked pass defense last year. Bringing back CJ Gardner-Johnson was a nice starting point to improve this group, but just imagine if Howie Roseman added the 6'2", 185-pound Wiggins to complement CJ and Darius Slay in the secondary. Number 23, Los Angeles Chargers. Projected trade with Minnesota Vikings, Troy Fautanu. After getting their receiver at number 8, the Bolts can now honor Jim Harbaugh's wish to add it to the trenches. The Chargers have superstar Rashawn Slater at left tackle, so let's give them the versatile Troy Fautanu, another plug-and-play guy who could solidify the right tackle position for the next decade plus. 
Number 24, Los Angeles Rams. Projected trade with Dallas Cowboys, Bo Nix. The trade down works beautifully for the Rams, who get two extra picks and still come away with Oregon's Bo Nix anyway. The Rams don't have too many pressing needs, but with the injury-prone Matthew Safford entering his age 36 season, this feels like the perfect opportunity to draft and develop his successor. Nix isn't quite NFL ready, so there's no harm in waiting for him to take over Sean McVay's offense for a year or two. Number 25, Green Bay Packers, Amarius Mims. The release of David Bakhtiari leaves the pack with a gaping hole at offensive tackle. Jordan Love has more than enough weapons around him, so adding a long-term piece on the O-line should be the priority here. Fortunately, the draft is loaded with stout offensive linemen. Enter Georgia's Amarius Mims, a run-blocking force who also didn't allow a single sack over his last two years of college ball. Number 26, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Chop Robinson. The Bucks love to address the front seven in the early rounds, so why stop now, especially with Shaq Barrett and Devin White both departing this offseason? Penn State's Chop Robinson it seems like the perfect addition to Todd Bowles' blitz-happy defense led by Vita Vea, Levante Davis, and Joe Tyron Choyinka. Number 27, Arizona Cardinals from Houston, Texans, Jerzon Newton. No Cardinal player hit seven sacks last season, and they finished dead last against the run. In other words, help is needed on that defensive line. Jerzon Newton is the perfect solution here, a one-man wrecking crew of a run-stopper who logged 13 sacks over his last two years at Illinois. Number 28, Buffalo Bills, Adonai Mitchell. With Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis both gone, the Bills' top receiver on the depth chart is Curtis Samuel. So yeah, they're totally getting a new weapon for Josh Allen one way or another. Texas wideout Adonai Mitchell is a contested catch specialist with a massive 6'4", 196-pound frame. That is the perfect target to pair with Allen's all-world abilities. Number 29, Detroit Lions, Darius Robinson. Detroit needs another stud pass rusher to complement Aiden Hutchinson, and Dan Campbell should love a physical in-your-face guy like Missouri's Darius Robinson. At 6'5 and 296 pounds, Robinson would fit perfectly in the Lions' bully ball identity. Number 30, Baltimore Ravens, Xavier Worthy. Baltimore hit a home run with the Zay Flowers pick last year, but Lamar Jackson still needs another dynamic pass catcher to help out there. We're just getting too excited about the idea of a Worthy Flowers and Mark Andrews pass catching tandem. Those three and Derrick Henry for the reigning MVP would be absolutely ridiculous. Number 31, San Francisco 49ers, Jackson Powers Johnson. Jake Brendel is a fine option at center, but Powers Johnson has a skill set to be a top five guy at the position. And let's not forget about how much the 49ers O-line struggled against the Chiefs pass rush in Super Bowl 58. And with Trent Williams getting up there in age, this feels like a good time for John Lynch and company to think long term on the O-line. Number 32, Kansas City Chiefs, Lad McConkey. The signing of Marquise Brown is supposed to shore up the Chiefs' receiving core, but with Rasheed Rice facing an uncertain future due to his legal issues, the Chiefs might want to plan for a potential long-term absence. Throw in the fact that Brown is only here on a one-year deal, and the Chiefs have every incentive to go receiver. McConkey, who averaged 15.9 yards per catch in his final year at Georgia, can replace Marquez Valdez scantling as Patrick Mahomes' deep threat. But hey, which 2024 NFL draft prospect are you hoping your team will land? Let us know in the comment section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.